Welcome. My name is William Messacar. I am a Master Model Railroader in the 4th Division of the Pacific Northwest Region of the National Model Railroad Association. And I want to welcome all of you to the virtual layout tour we'll have presented today by members of the NMRA. We would encourage you to find out about the NMRA and join in order to participate in these virtual tours. We have other virtual clinics and other activities for the National Model Railroad Association that we think you'll find uh, a big help to your modeling and you'll get to meet model railroaders just like you. So welcome to our tour and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, our first presenter today is Dee Voss, who has been very active in NMRA for many years and is going to give us an overview of the Everett Monte Cristo layout and his various attempts to model it. Go ahead, Dee. Why did I model the Everett Monte Cristo? The reasons are, it's a branch line, short. It's also local, which means I can, I can visit the site anytime. If I got a bug up my rear end, I can go up there and say, ah, that's what it is, kind of. See if there's any remnants of it left over. Standard gauge as well, which means it connects into the main lines that are in the area. Uh, I like early modeling, 1890s, 1910 is what I modeled. And at the time, I didn't find anybody modeling the Everett Monte Cristo, which is kind of nice so that we can't say, hey, I did it better than you did. Today, I don't know if anybody as yet is still is modeling it. Um, and I also feel that prototype modeling is easier than freelance because I don't have to make up in my mind what a scene looks like. I just have to look at a photograph. So I found it to be somewhat easier to do. Uh, as I was modeling it, uh, books and more photographs became available. And everybody probably realizes there is a book out on the Everett Monte Cristo right now. And the other, and finally, they model, they had modeling, uh, mining and logging operations along the line, which is kind of fun. To give, give you an idea of where this is, here are a few maps that were kind of, I believe they were created back then. And um, just to give you a sense of it, here's Everett. And I live about right there in Mill Creek. But the line went from Everett down to Snohomish through Lake Stevens, Granite Falls, out along the river. But ultimately, you get to Monte Cristo. And this box here is a closer view of this area to give you a sense of what was in the Everett area. First of all, you had the Great Northern coming down from the north, which took over when they finally did get to Everett, they took over the Seattle Montana Railroad, which they owned, but nobody knew it. They came in early on to buy land that wasn't inflated when they purchased the right of way. You also have, um, over here on the middle of the screen, the Seattle Lakeshore Eastern Railroad, which was put in, and the Northern Pacific ultimately purchased that as well. The Everett Monte Cristo purchased the 3S Railroad, which started in Everett and connected up with the Seattle Lakeshore. <clears throat> and that's kind of how things got started. This is a map that was put out by Snohomish County showing all the railroads in the county. And fortunately it did include the Everett Monte Cristo. And I'll just take my indicator here and just kind of quickly go over the route down to Snohomish, up to Hartford Junction, on over through Road Canyon, Canyon Lumber Company, Silverton, Barlow and Monte Cristo. The circles are what I could afford to model because of limited space in my basement. So I'll be showing some scenes of each of these areas that are, in, that are circled. Okay, quick history. 1889, Parcel discovered gold in the Cascades. 92, um, the consortium went back and got John D. Rockefeller to be the major underwriter for the construction of a railroad line out into the Cascades, into the Monte Cristo area. <clears throat> 1892, with that money, they, they purchased the 3S line from Everett to Snohomish. Now that was pretty well finished, so they didn't 
had to do much railroad work there. And the Saddle Lake Shore, of course, was constructed. So they really just started uh, at Hartford Junction, having to build a railroad about 41 miles east. Unfortunately, 40 inches of snow came that year. You're talking about six inches now? Ugh, piece of cake. And in one year later, through that summer, there was a track all the way to Monte Cristo. Now you think about that. One year, 41 miles of track, six tunnels, 60 bridges and trestles, and just everything else. I mean, they had to blast sides of mountains in order to get some grade going between these tunnels and other places. So that was a whale of a lot of work just to get accomplished in one year. 1893, after they did finish the route to Monte Cristo, it was a silver panic. And a lot of people um, pulled up stakes from helping in this endeavor, except for Rockefeller. He, he stuck around. He had his money in it. He had plenty anyway. I think he was the richest man in the world at the time. <clears throat> and for the next four years, it was off and on taking gold, uh, smelting it in Everett and so on. And um, there was one, another horrendous snowstorm. And in the springtime, uh, all the tracks in Rogue Canyon were washed out and it was closed for a while. They finally did get it opened up again. And that was the, one of the major downfalls. Mm -hmm. They never should have put the track through the Rogue Canyon. It was too low and that's where all the water from the Cascades went. 1899, Rockefeller had a thought he was going to eventually give this up because they discovered that the Cascades were too young in um, having enough gold. The deeper they dug, the less gold there was. A lot different than what it was in Colorado. <clears throat> so he basically forced other investors to get out of the business so he could control what he was going to do with it. 1900, he sold the 3S line to Northern Pacific. 1902, he sold um, Hartford to Monte Cristo to Northern Pacific and Northern Pacific almost had to, had to take it. They almost had no choice to take it because it connected to their main line and all branch lines that were critical to the local community had to be absorbed by the major line that was there. That was the reason they came on. They renamed it Monte Cristo Branch in 1903. So really the Everett Monte Cristo ceased to exist about that time. <clears throat> and Rockefeller then sold the smelter that was in Everett to Asarco. And guess who got stuck with the EPA cleanup 20, 100 years later? Asarco did. And they never ran the smelter. They bought it, dismantled it, walked away, took all the stuff down to Tacoma, I guess whatever they could get. And they held on to that until they had to pay for the cleanup here. What was it, 10 years ago, five years ago, we started? 1915, Rucker Brothers, which is one of the major logging companies along the line, uh, started leasing the line to bring out, continue bringing out their logs. And until about 1935, when the hotel at the Big Four uh, burned down, they started just pulling all the rail out all the way from Monte Cristo into uh, Hartford and selling it to Japan in 1936. Now think about that, selling the rail to 1936, where do you think that steel went? Probably into warships in Japan. And we probably sunk a few of those ships during the Second World War. That's kind of an interesting little side note. But they didn't get it all. They, I don't know what happened. Here's, here's some rail that was left. Somebody went up there one day and there was a washout and here's two rails kind of still hanging in the air. It's kind of interesting. Okay, this is the layout in my basement. Um, Everett right here, the center aisle. Hartford down here at the door, going around Granite Falls, Rogue Canyon. I only was able to model three of the six tunnels that existed, a little bit of logging, 
Rucker Brothers had up here, Silverton, Barlow Pass, and then eventually into Monte Cristo. And you can see it's it's a pretty simple layout, you know, single line running, but that's okay. It means when I have obsessions, people have to pay attention. They can't pass each other very easily. It's it's rather difficult to do. <clears throat> okay, uh, just a quick rundown of the passenger stations to give you a sense of the distances and the names of the places. But here we are from Everett to Monte Cristo, 68.1 miles. But of course, those little circles that I showed you is all that I had room to, to model. And if you bought a ticket to go from Everett to Monte Cristo, it cost you $3.40 one way. Well, in today's dollar, that's about $30, 35 cents. So I guess that's still kind of reasonable to go 68 miles, kind of cool. Okay, <clears throat> this is what the waterfront looked like in Everett in the 1890s. Um, you can just see log mills all over the darn place and logs are floating in Puget Sound. Um, golly, they went out two or 3,000 feet into the sound. Um, and here's the 42nd, uh, I'm sorry, 14th Street dock that was about 3,000 feet long and it had about five mills on it. They were doing shakes. And the note on the bottom of it is 1893, uh, Great Northern was pulling a bunch of boxcars full of shakes to take back east. So it was kind of famous. This was a major source of shakes for the country, I guess. Well, I couldn't model all of that. So on my layout, this is my full waterfront that I had available. There's only one dock and here's a guy throwing piles down. Uh, this is, if you're standing here in the aisle, you're standing in Puget Sound. I give you a sense of, of what's available. And I finally said, I want to find out what the rest of this line was all about. And that's when I got into trains, which means that I've got the full length and breadth of trying to model the Everett Monte Cristo. And here's a little tour uh, starting uh, Puget Sound is on my left. The dock you see there is the Weyerhaeuser dock uh, coming up north from Seattle. And, and pretty soon we're gonna get into Everett um, now I took the sound out because I didn't want it to kind of interfere with what I'm saying. Later on, I'll show you that there's pretty good sounds that are going on. If you look over here to the left, you'll see the sailing ships coming in. And that guy is pretty much just running on his own. Um, I've got him on automatic and with a timer. He comes in for so long, he sits at the dock, he backs up and takes off, goes wherever he goes, and then he comes back later. <clears throat> now, all these structures that you see to the left were built from a 3D modeling program called SketchUp. And CJ Turner, who's also listening here, can pipe in anytime he wishes. Um, we're all making all those structures that we can. And every structure you see here is pretty much been uh, created using SketchUp. I think it's a reasonably easy program to learn as opposed to other 3D modeling programs out there. I've worked on some that were very difficult to understand. I finally gave up until my daughter-in-law said, why don't you use SketchUp? And I did, and I haven't looked back. Uh, the warehouse here is the uh, GN warehouse. I'm sitting there. You'll see the train running right there. And here's Everett, and I'd say we got, what, one third of the buildings um, in Everett in place so far. A lot of them are just homes, um, but later on, you're gonna see a little bit more of the business district as we get through there. And zooming out to give you a sense, I know I have some more uh, piers to put in. Give you a sense of what's going on here. This is the... Uh, we're going to show the GN yard. I haven't put in a lot of the trains in this demonstration, but this probably would be pretty full of the uh, Great Northern and the Seattle Railroad cars. 
the red green arrows are turnouts. And um, if you're in an op session, you can actually turn off that. And only when you hover over the turnout can you get a sense of which way is it thrown. But uh, in this demonstration, I've got them turned on so I can look in the distance without hovering over the turnout and see what's going on. Here I'm in the cab, seeing one of the piers, one of the mills that's out there. And if you're really um, brave enough, you can actually make this locomotive run by using the actual controls in the locomotive. Right now I'm running it as if I would a, a DCC locomotive. And on the lower right, you'll see the control where I just use a dial to set the speed and the direction and, and honk the horn and those kinds of things. I can't honk it here because it's, it's a video. <clears throat> But you can see, and of course, all the water here, they should be full of logs. And I just haven't gotten around to putting out 20,000 logs yet floating in the river or in the in Puget Sound. But to me, it's kind of cool. Now you look over on the left here, there wasn't enough room to put a road on ground. So they, they built a pier or a trestle so that they could put just normal traffic on it, let guys walk to work or they'd have carts and stuff that go up and down that thing. And today it's been filled in to where there is an actual road there. This is the 14th Street Pier. It's got about five mills on it, creating the shakes. And that's where that uh, GN train was pulling a full load of uh, shakes out going back east. Okay, that's pretty well the end of that. I could go all the way around the north end of Everett, but this is where the video stops. So we'll move on to the next one. And here's that pier showing the GN pulling. And I put some cars and a locomotive on here to give you a sense of, of, of what's going on on the dock. Uh, on the other side, the Everett Monte Cristo, uh, Rockefeller owned a smelter that was in the northeast corner of Everett. And, and here it is after Osarco had purchased it. And you can see it's in not too good of condition. You can see some breakdown of the sides and so on. But to give you a sense of the size of this thing, <clears throat> and the GN Delta Yard is, is, is right here in the lower part of the picture. So that's the prototype. And here's on my layout what I was able to model. Now, if I built the thing the full size, it would have probably taken up the full table to do that. So I had to really concentrate and compress and only show so many buildings to give you a sense of what this is, the Delta Yard and so on is in front here. And then here is the train's uh, interpretation of that. And again, I'll run a video where I'm gonna do a fly like an eagle and, and uh, give you an understanding of what was in that mill. But they were taking concentrated ore from the Cascades, not only from Everett Monte Cristo mines, but from other mines as well, and smelting it down. And I believe that they were then, once it was smelted down into, well, I don't know, 90, over 99% gold, they'd send it on down to San Francisco and they'd use it down there. And again, this was all created using uh, SketchUp. The smoke coming out is kind of a, a cool thing. And on to the next. Now, um, going through Snohomish, which I didn't model, um, Granite Falls, I did model that a little bit, but I'm not showing it here. We get into the first trestle that goes into Rogue Canyon into Tunnel One. The prototype, upper left, my layout, upper right, and then the trains here. That's kind of cool. You can actually see the train going across little sound to give you a sense of what's going on going into tunnel one. Yeah. So it's amazing how realistic you can make these things. E, is there uh, anything left of that uh, bridge over that today? There is the foundation is there. 
um, you can go down. What they did, they replaced these piles and so on uh, with a concrete pier. And you can actually uh, get down there and see some of that today. Now, as we get into Rogue Canyon, uh, here at Tunnel 2, there was actually a suspension bridge uh, at the prototype here, a suspension bridge across the river that went into a <laughs> lime source. There was a, um, they were extracting lime because they needed it in the smelting process and they built a suspension bridge to bring it across. And on the right side, I, I show that somewhat, a little bit different bridge. I've got a cable bridge rather than a suspension bridge that's, that's bringing across wood, not the lime. Um, again, you have to mix and match stuff. But in the prototype, I had to get it right. So I put a suspension bridge in, in there. And if you get close enough, you can see that. And of course it's dumping into a cart over here on the right side. And it would take it and um, they, would, they would break it down. And here um, upper right is the prototype looking through tunnel six and you can see tunnel five in the background. Here's my interpretation of my layout, tunnel six, tunnel five. Certainly they're a lot closer to each other. I only did three tunnels, remember. And then on the lower right is the, um, is the train's interpretation of tunnel six, tunnel, tunnel five. You can see some of the issues with trains. I don't know if it's an issue or not, but the, but the sharpness of the rocks is not there. Um, if I create, I could create it. I could create all this sharp so you get a real sense of uh, how it is. That would take up a, an incredible amount of computer time to do that, to create that kind of look. So I'm painting pretty much a flat surface with, um, with rocks and debris and other, uh, those kinds of things. And this photograph's taken, I, I should do a little bit more work here up on top because it flattens out and it, it's not really that way. Give you a sense of, of what's going on. In Silverton, um, prototype model I built out of styrene and I, I glued uh, styrene shakes on top and over the years that glue I guess has caused the roof to warp and every once in a while I take it apart and uh, heat it and bend it back and then it's straight for a year or two and then it warps on me again and then of course using SketchUp I created the same station here um, in trains. And here is Barlow Pass, um, the prototype, and then in, in trains. Again, I think I pretty well got the angle close enough. Now the, um, the engine I was able to download from the trains download site, somebody else had created it. And it's amazing, you know, everything works on it. The cars that it's pulling, I created in SketchUp. And it has all the interiors and everything else in it. One of these days, I'm gonna figure out how to put passengers in it. There is a way to do that. So you can stop at stations and, and load people. Right now they're kind of empty. Maybe it's a maiden run with nobody in it. I don't know. Give you a sense of how it works. Barlow Pass, a little bit further east, probably, I don't know, a half mile. Uh, there was a, a ranger station here and um, a road that you can't quite see that went north. Right now it's the Mountain Loop Highway that kind of cuts right through here and goes north of this way. And uh, eventually it ends up in Burlington, <clears throat> in Arlington. But <clears throat> prototype left, upper right on my layout and lower right is the trains. And looks like I got, you know, if, if you look at the shape of the mountains behind, I think I did a pretty good job on painting it on the backdrop, pretty close to the same thing. And then I was able to download the topo of the ground 
from the federal government and put that into trains before I started laying track. And uh, it looks like they got it pretty right because the shape of the mountains behind there is pretty, pretty close to what, it, what we see over here. Monte Cristo, 68 miles in. Prototype on the right, my layout, lower left. And I put something extra in there, a little, little mine check with a bear trying to get in for the winter, trying to go through that front door. And then over on the right side, uh, the trains. And still working to get more buildings in there. You can see a whole cluster of buildings here that I'm yet to put down here in the lower right. Getting a little bit further up, Dumas. Dumas Road right here in the prototype. And here at Mill Creek, we got a we got a road named Dumas as well. Don't know if it's named after the same person or not, but anyway. Um, over here on my layout, Dumas is sitting right over here on the right with a nice, wonderful curved trestle that goes to the concentrator. You can see the concentrator here in the back if you look through the smoke of some type. And then in the proto, in my uh, trains, the uh, concentrators back here. So they take raw ore from the mines and they had a set of hammers inside. They'd break it down into small particles and it, it would flow over less, uh, what do they call them, Leslie tables? Winfrey tables, sorry, Winfrey tables. And uh, the, the gold, which is heavier, would drop down. The lightweight stuff would, would fly off the top and they just let it dump right into the river. They wheel it out and dump it out. So sometimes I think you'd find a lot of prospectors down in the river picking up all the debris, looking for the gold that hadn't been picked up from the Winfrey tables. And one good thing about trains is that I get to look at a lot of other stuff that I don't even have space to do. And I was always trying to figure out how in the devil did they get the ore to the concentrator? And what they did was they started putting in a set of tramways, two or three miles, five miles long up into the mountains. And just like ski lifts, they cable them up and they, they fill these buckets and they bring it down. This one here, which is called a Halday patent tram was the 45 mine into Silverton, but they use this same uh, Halday patent tram up in Monte Cristo to uh, some other dam, uh, to some other uh, mines up there. But uh, you can see how it just keeps on going around the mountain and over on the other side and it's bringing it down and then they put it in trains and, and they take it to a, a concentrator to break it down. This uh, Bleichert patent tram is in Monte Cristo bringing it down from the, the mystery mines and this was about three or four miles long as well. And it's different than the one above. You can see that the larger bucket is riding on a cable that didn't move, and then it clamps onto a smaller cable that pulls these buckets along. And the concentrator in Monte Cristo is right there. So they dump it here, they'd haul it into the concentrator, they'd crush it down further and so on. So that's kind of what they were doing. The other thing that really got interested here lately, because we're doing all of Everett, it seems, we started looking at the, the, the trolleys in, in town and uh, did find a map that showed the route of the trolleys. So this is kind of cool. And so I red highlighted the routes that were taken. And you'll notice here, Seattle Engineering Inner Urban Railway. Anybody's any and familiar with the trolley in the inner urban that went from Seattle to Everett. And then eventually uh, with a break in it, I think they went from Mount Vernon to Bellingham, the same thing. They never filled in between the two. So what I'm gonna do is show you a series of photographs starting on Hewitt Avenue, going to the GN Depot, then the station for the inner urban, jump out to the Everett, oh, going by the Monte Cristo Hotel, Everett pulp and paper, because that's what it was. They were taking workers to these places. And then Puget Sound Reduction Works 
which is the Everett Monte Cristo smelter, uh, 14th Street Bridge as well, and then finally back to the um, bus barn. So that's what we're going to do here. And here's going up Hewitt. And here's at the same time we're making our way to the GN station. If you look right up here, it's a wonderful looking GN station. Is this working? Yeah, here we go. Um, all of these buildings were created by CJ. And uh, nobody tried to steal him because I, I got him here. He's, he's working for me. Um, working for me. He's playing with me. There you go. But you can see that uh, a series of photographs and using the um, uh, Sanborn maps, you get a, a, a footprint of the building. You know what the, the height is of the building and uh, whether it's two story and a, a lot of information in, in the Sanborn map. And then with a photograph of the building, it, it, you're golden. And you can see the detail on the GN station over here that um, you get a sense of it's a beautiful building. Right now, I think there's just a one story warehouse, flat roof warehouse there. And I'm not sure why they tore it down. And if you look to the upper center of this photograph over here, you'll see the Monte Cristo Hotel, which is the most luxurious hotel there that Rockefeller paid to have built. And right now, the hospital is up in that area. So the, uh, the nuns took it over, made it a hospital, and it was eventually torn down and they built what, what finally was there now. Going by the Monte Cristo Hotel, lower left, and then lower right, here is the station for the inner urban, Seattle Everett inner urban, with the trolley going by there. It was a dual track and this guy would come out and we're looking north, so this guy would come out going right going south back to uh, Seattle. This is in uh, Lowell, the Everett Pope and Paper Mill. And um, I got on the good side, you can see the trolley here in the upper left corner. It would make his long way down and drop the workers off, get them to work. Over on the right, the trolley is getting to the Puget Sound um, smelter. Um, you saw that before, and so this is kind of down in the valley there, um, lower left. You see the trolleys going out to the 14th Street dock, five mills on it. So a lot of workers would make their way down and get to work. And finally, after all that traveling, here we, we've got the bus barn that was just off of uh, Hewitt. So yeah, I'll have to brag. I, I did make, I did model here are the Everett Pulp and Paper, CJ didn't do that, but CJ did build the bus barn and all those other wonderful buildings that you see in the background over here. So that's what that is. So here's, here's kind of where we are today, well, as of maybe six months ago, I guess. Um, I'll say 266 things. You can see the breakdown of the different things. And CJ, I show him at 1,416 things buildings and structures and all that you probably what about 2000 now cj uh i would guess but yeah. i think i'm running out of photographs uh, uh -oh. of prototypes i'll start and, making it up uh, but of course some of the some of the homes are still there so i just yeah. have to pop on to uh google earth and google earth and, and yeah. take some pictures from the street and take uh the helicopter and fly around it and get some more information and uh, then, you know, then it's a matter of pulling it into SketchUp and uh, drawing the, the house or whatever. I don't think, is anybody else doing trains or have made an attempt to kind of get into this? Is it, is it CJ and I that are the only two that? No, this is Bob Butler. I'm down in Phoenix and a couple of yeah. us in the Sun City West Mall Railroad Club are doing trains. Yeah, I think, you know, I it was hanging around with me for many years. My major problem was to create the topo for this territory. It was a major stopping point until I discovered a good way to do that. And there is a um, program 
and it's like a $35 program from a fellow out of England called Transdem. And he, that program has the ability to download Topo from virtually every government in the world that can be used. And then when you take this green looking Topo map and you paste on that, any map you want to, if you can geolocate the map, put some coordinates on the corners, you can then paste it down onto this topo. And that's what really got me started. So Transdem was really the, was really the deal. And then once you got that, uh, you know, you can, you can also put down, if you have a map of um, track, uh, and you can geolocate it there. You can paste that down. Now you've got a nice thing to trace right up over the top of it. So wonderful, wonderful program. Um, again, structures can be downloaded from the trains uh, download station. You can create your own. I use SketchUp. There are other 3D programs out there that we always get in an argument. This one's better than that one and all that kind of business. But I found that SketchUp is by far the easiest one to use. It doesn't have some of the um, capabilities of these other ones that can animate. Uh, SketchUp doesn't allow you to animate like a locomotive. These other ones do. But then again, I'm still learning how to do this stuff. So I'll worry about that later. And here are some of the references that I've uh, used. Uh, certainly the Everett Monte Cristo Railroad, which was written probably three or four years after I got started. Um, some of the authors are still certainly alive. Uh, Phil Woodhouse, I believe, has died. Daryl Jacobson's a great source of information. He's got cabinets full of, of documents. And uh, Sanborn maps, very good thing to have. Um, and you can see Granite Falls Museum has been a wonderful source of of information as well. I think I may be going over time, so let me stop. Thank you. What about the mine, the actual mine portals? Are they a fair ways up the mountain? And uh, was that ore tram down to Monte Cristo per se to the railroad? They are in the mountain. And there are some books available that will tell you where these mines are. And they, of course, they give you all kinds of warnings. Don't go in here. You know, you got a problem here and there. But there's two books out that talk about the mines. One of them's called Discovering uh, Washington's Historic Mines. I don't know if I, I can show that right here. This is one book. Yeah. Again, it's put out by the same author of the Everett Monte Cristo. And it's um, published probably by the, uh, let me see if I can tell. Well, I won't take time for that. That's one book that's available. And then there's another one, Gold Mining in Washington, which is pretty good. I find this discovering mines in Western Washington is probably the better source. Hello again. Um, this is a, another reminder that this uh, virtual layout tour has been brought to you by members of the fourth division of the Pacific Northwest region of the National Model Railroad Association. And we hope you've enjoyed it. And we want to encourage you to, again, find out about the NMRA online. Uh, both PNR and NMRA have an excellent website where you can get information about joining and participating in this and other activities like our clinics that are held all over the region. So thank you for joining us today and wish you great modeling.